today on Zingaro. We leave the Seca Island to go back to Boca Chica. We hit the shark, we get hit by a swole, and we're living the life. What? Get the GoPro! I will! I'm, I'm doing something here, okay? Welcome to episode 37 of Saving Zingaro. Subscribe to see all our future adventures and hit the like button to tell us that we're doing okay. <laughs> So Cleveland and I are about to go spearfishing, right buddy? Word. We're leaving the girl here to edit. Thank you for doing that, babe. You're awesome. We're leaving her with this fish soup staring at her. Tell me that's not scary. You're so ugly. Look at this guy. I'm sorry, but tell me, tell me that's not a face you can love. Look at that. <laughs> Wait a second. And this skin is really hard to, to cut through. That's why a lot of people don't like to spearfish them. And these are the scales. They're big. It's like freaking armor. Really easy to make. You can you can just grill it right in the in the skin. You just take this fillet, wash it off in salt water. You don't want to use fresh water on a saltwater fish. But just pop it on a pan like that, or put some vegetables around it, grill the vegetables a little bit, and then pop it on the pan and let it kind of don't turn it. This right here is one of my favorite meals ever. New day, new fish to kill. We're back in the game, spear fishing because we don't have anything else to eat. Yeah, we got a big mahi on the way here, and then I got a trigger, a pompano, and a little chub fish. Today, I'm going for like maybe two big trigger fish, and maybe a snapper or something, or an amberjack. One big trigger fish, one snapper. But I like that. We're gonna give one to Don. We're gonna get filet one and give it to Don, so that's Don's fish. I'm hungry, man. We don't even have any food. We're, we have to fish. <laughs> And one pompano. And so maybe something. No, that's like the only two fish I could recognize, to be honest. We're back, we're done. We caught some dinner, breakfast, lunch. So we got. Four, four pompano and two big, huge triggers. This is the one you got. This is a huge fish, man. Just look at it compared to the one I got. Aw, yours is sweet. Just shot 20 minutes ago. <laughs> That's the little salt and pepper and flour. That's all she needs. That's gonna be a good piece right there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so we're done fishing. We're getting out of here because there's like, there's a swell moving in. Also, we're way better off at the mooring at the beach. So that's where we're going now. The guys are getting the anchor up right now. And I think that's it for today. Tomorrow we're gonna sail the 20 miles back to Boca Chica. So let's hope we'll have some wind. Okay, that's good. We just got out of Isla Secas to go back to Boca Chica. First of all, to provision. Last night we had to steal gnocchis from our neighbors because we were eating fish with fish for breakfast, for lunch. So we got some gnocchis for dinner. We're back in the fishing game. We're getting the hand lens out right now. Also the professional fishing pole that doesn't catch us ever. What else is new? Oh yeah, we're gonna try to find Carlos. Carlos is apparently the owner of the marina in Boca Chica. And we just learned that they can haul out catamarans. Uh, so we're gonna try to get hauled out, work on the bottom, put the new epoxy 
copper paint on there. So we can go from here directly to Hawaii. That's the new plan, by the way. Yeah, we're going to Hawaii. Take me to the land, cause no one's gonna find me, cause I'm leaving. Really, it should only be used from like 90 degrees to about 160. But if we pull it way around to the other hull, we can almost go straight down with it. James? Yeah. One question yeah. I have. How is it possible that every time you brush your teeth, there's toothpaste? Every time. <laughs> Check it out. Here's lunch. Live from Zingara. Again, my no me action. It finally happened. We caught a shark. I'm gonna go and save distance from this whole maneuver. Oh god! I can barely get him up. Ah, look out! Never mind. Okay, Cleveland, either get get on him or Okay. Wait, wait, I'll get you the pliers. Okay. It's not very big. <laughs> okay, I got I got it. You keep your keep your hands on him. Sorry, buddy. This may hurt a little. It's really in there. I think I'm gonna have to just cut this off. Okay, I'm gonna cut it. You just hold him, hold him, hold I'm him. I'm gonna move him back. Hold so him. Have... He's not going anywhere. It's okay, buddy. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, bud. Okay, here we go. Okay, how are we getting ready? You got his, I got his belly. You got it? Yeah, I got it. Whoa, and he's gone. Hey, we saved the thing too. Except I clipped it. We're gonna need a new one of these, but poor guy. That was the first time. Hey, and there's wind again now. Yeah. Oh, it's blowing in from the storm. Let me check. So this is where we catch the rain. Right in the corners of the boat, of the deck upstairs. And it comes in right here. Same thing on the other side, right there. Bush water tastes the best. And it's free. It's a double rainbow all the way. Chica from Sorry. the Secas, and uh, 
We're supposed to meet Carlos. He owns a marina, which isn't really a marina, it's just a bunch of mooring balls. But he's apparently got a Gemini that he hauled out because someone left it there too long. And he's got a trailer he made for that. And I'm wondering if it's close to this, we might be able to modify it to get it get it up. He's got two, tra two tractors and a trailer, and we might be able to get this boat out of the water. That way we can do the bottom here. I don't want to do it on the beach because we have to strip off all the old paint to put the epoxy coat on. I'm sure he won't charge me more than like three or four hundred bucks and then maybe another three or four hundred to do the, for the time there. So if we can get this thing hauled out and painted for a thousand dollars, we won't ever have to paint it again. Long term plans are to replace all the rest of the rig because I got to roll a Dyneema this time when, when I went home and then epoxy the bottom. And after those two things are done, we're heading for Hawaii. There's a little bit of woodwork on the boat too. There's a little soft spot over there on the, on the starboard side. And it's just, there's, a, there's just various places where the, where the fiberglass is coming up. So we got a little work to do. Okay, baby, I need you up here because uh, we need to get underneath these power lines. It's like really loud. I need you so over there are the power lines. That we almost hit when we came in because we didn't see them and it was high tide and we have to do it again. I can't really tell. I can't tell. How high are they? I think we're good. Oh my god. Are you sure? Yeah. It's super close. Yeah, we're good. Just floor it. Getting close though. Jesus. Damn. Maybe like a foot. <laughs> I'm surprised we made it through in high tide, man. Not yeah, close. I mean, uh, how did you make it through in high tide? Because it's got to be I'm like six feet lower right now. I don't think it's as close as you think. Yeah, maybe not. It looked very close. And maybe next time we'll climb up the mast to, you know, make sure. Yeah. Yeah, that's smart. Not a bad like a idea. PVC pole, just hook it, hook it over. Give me a sip of that, please. It's pretty good. God, this is gorgeous. Holy Yeah, right? This is amazing. So, we made it. Dude, we're barely moving. Through the power lines. Oh, yeah, wait a second. <laughs> One obstacle to another. Like we made it through the power lines and now there's a wicked current here. We're barely moving, look at this. Look what I just did to those boys. Let's try them. Red is me, obviously. <laughs> that was just so James. I hate this game, by the way. I'm just telling you right now. I haven't won in like 14 games.